So. Right. So we're here with uh, Dr. Isaac Kahane from Children's Hospital and an old friend of mine and collaborator and co-conspirator on uh, IT ideas. So, so Zach, what are you up to down days? Uh, tell me about your SMART program. Okay, so the SMART program was to answer a simple question and we were lucky enough that the Office of the National Co Coordinator decided to um, fund our um, answering of the question, which is, can you take these current monolithic systems that exist in the electronic health records, where you don't like, let's say, the you like everything except the uh, order entry system. Unlike an iPhone, you can't rip out the to-do list and replace it with another to-do list app. You can't repeat, uh, rip out the order entry system and put in a new order entry system. You have to either get the vendor to spend a lot of your money to change it, or you have to go with a new vendor. Very expensive propositions, takes a lot of time. So we said, can we actually go to, a, to an app store for health? And to do that, we created a uh, infrastructure with this funding called Smart Substitutable Medical app, Apps for Reusable Technology. And what that allows you to do is create, once you've created a container for these apps that sits shallowly on top of the various electronic medical record systems, such as a Cerner system or a Microsoft Health Vault system. What this allows you to do then is to have these same apps that are built out of web technologies and specifically RDF using the, and the OAuth authentication system. We're able to have these apps running on these multiple platforms unmodified. So you have an app store, one set of apps, and they run identically on these different systems to the extent that these systems have the right data. And so we've, we, we've been going now for two years, we've gotten a lot of adoption, but we've also <coughs> seen that it may be necessary to go another route, which relates to another project that I'm involved in called I2B2. This too, we've been very lucky, uh, funded by now the National Institutes of Health, uh, to, which asks the following question, can you use the byproducts of healthcare delivery to actually conduct discovery research? And so we created a software stack that allows you to extract data from, and by the way, this is free and open source, that allows you to extract uh, data from the EMR wholesale, including the text, and once you have loaded the, the data into the stack, it allows you to slice and dice it through a user interface that we call the workbench, and it works with various other software, um, <coughs> soft, uh, service-oriented uh, architecture modules that we call I2B2 cells, some of which we've built, some of which have been built by this large community of I2B2 that includes 60 academic health centers um, in the United States, 12 internationally, and some of the, of the cells involve natural language processing of the textual content of the records. And in fact, now we have several languages because we have a, this large academic user group. But what we've done with this is to show that we can actually run very cost-effective genomic studies on the populations of uh, healthcare systems, phenotyping the patients using the uh, electronic medical record. We've shown that we can do pharmacovigilance to identify um, drugs that have uh, undesired effects, and we've shown that we can use it for uh, quality improvement. And so here, to close, is the, the unification. Let's, we're implementing SMART on top of these I2B2 systems. These I2B2 systems are es essentially ways to get data out of the lock and key of some of these proprietary vendors and now we can create this very versatile <coughs> app uh, development framework on top of I2B2 that not only runs these apps, so this, these apps that we get from EMRs can now run on, on top of I2, I2B2. And if I2B2 is near real time enough, we're getting a lot of the EMR functionality. So what are you, are you doing with the uh, semantic web and all of this? Semantic web is absolutely um, crucial to the smart system. What it involves is we have an RDF layer all the way down to the API level of the, of the containers that I was describing. Below that, it's still the old messy uh, uh, health IT. And our goal has been to be incremental in our innovation. So we're providing full um, RDF uh, implementations. And in fact, if you want to um, create an app, all you need to do is know a bit of JavaScript and RDF in your can run it and program it in JavaScript with some RDF um, add-ons and you're home free. But then it interacts 
through the API, through the smart API, <coughs> with all the messiness and complexity and value of the existing electronic health records and IT systems implemented in healthcare. So what have, what have you actually done with uh, RDF and, and uh, semantic web technology? What, tell me where so it for plugs in. For, for example, in order to get any given data type, when we ask a get message, like get me the labs in the um, API, the get message is actually a RESTful service call to a specific electronic medical record for a specific individual for a specific data type, all done as a URI. And so literally you'll see um, your medical uh, center slash um, that your uh, patient ID slash the data type slash dates, for example, and that will uniquely qualify um, in a RESTful call. And you don't have to go through 20 million lines of code to figure out how to get the access method for that particular data type. Well, this URI idea has been uh, something I've been bouncing around for years on the VA and DOD interface. I call it universal namespace way back when, and this is before I met Tim Berners-Lee. But the idea of every object has a name, and you start with that as your fundamental source of connectivity. And if you want to build a dedicated API to make something happen, fine. But you can always just do a, a restful connection of some sort, and you've got a connection to start with. And then uh, I, my, I suspect that we can do a whole lot more with just the raw connections uh, right out of the box with that architecture. I, I agree. And Tom, honestly, if people had adopted that more broadly, or at all, in fact, so much more innovation could have happened. Because right now, the learning uh, curve is impossibly steep. And so any reasonable young developer is going to be turned off when they look at what they can do on the general web, as opposed to what they have to learn for these uh, inf health information systems, where they don't have that kind of transparent access to data. It's a, it creates a huge um, obstacle. So I, I couldn't agree with you more. And, uh, and maybe this is now the time. And as usual, you're ahead of your time. <laughs> and what about the security and privacy uh, uh, dealing with all this now? What so, are you doing with that? So we're using the OAuth protocol, which is a very nice uh, uh, web service protocol, which can mesh nicely and create adapters to the various authentication systems used by hospitals. So in the end, uh, we can still have a single sign-on in a hospital. And as long as the app is, is, uh, is assured by the OAuth system that you've been duly uh, authenticated, it can actually determine authorization and provide you access to that functional service. But, so, the, but by having a URI structure of, of that level of granularity at a very large scale, yes. doesn't it buy you a whole lot more capability for granularity of reference? And, and, and Absolutely. And the standard, as you, as you well know, Tom, and the standard role-based access, people make fairly broad and arbitrary decisions about whether you can see a row level view, a patient level view, a certain date level. This allows you to really say, you, doctor, can get to see this one data object. You, insurer, can only get to see that data object. So yes, you're absolutely right. So tell me, why don't you think, why do you think the semantic web didn't catch on? Uh, Tim has been pushing it for decades now. What, what, what are the barriers for that? Well, it's always been the question of uh, achieving that network effect. He had, a, he was, had perfect uh, pitch when he did uh, HTML uh, back uh, in the early 90s. And it was the, the semantic web uh, pitch was not pitch perfect when he first made it because it was too early. And I claim that I begin to see now the, uh, the architectures that are, not, that are now organically growing, such as, for example, uh, the uh, open social API. And so we're beginning to see now real data sources that are, represent large data sets that are engaged in the public that are now beginning to implement this interface. So that's, I think, the pitch is going to resonate a lot more now. And by the way, I'd like to uh, uh, congratulate you and thank you. We had a meeting in the uh, mid-1995, I think, with some of the VA people, Pete Solovitz, Tim Berners-Lee, and me, and uh, Clayton Curtis. We talked about the personalized medical record and such. Uh, Rob Kolodner uh, still goes back to that meeting as a foundation for the uh, My Healthy Vet activities in the VA, which is... Yeah, that's, I, he's very generous in, in his attribution. That's great. So, uh, thanks. Thank you, Isaac and Zach, and you've been a great uh, 
great collaborator over the years. It's so. of you, Tom. Thanks. Thanks a lot. And by the way, where are we and what are you doing this afternoon? I am at the, uh, we, we are both at the uh, Future, what is it called? Future Medicine? Uh, Future of Genomics Medicine. Future of Genomics Medicine 5 uh, conference. It's the first time I've been here. And I'm going to be giving a talk about how to use electronic health rec records for uh, genomic uh, discovery research. And we're at the uh, Scripps Pier at uh, La Jolla, California. And it's snowing in Boston right now. I'm wearing shoes. <laughs>